And hello, welcome back YouTube to our video discussion of turbulence modeling. We will continue on um, discussion of wall functions, and we wanted we are asking you know um, how are we supposed to think about wall shear stress in other kinds of flow that are not uh, based on experiment. For example, for pipe flow, you have a wall shear stress that can be easily done using this uh, Moody chart. And, and for the flat plate case, there is also an experimental kind of uh, curve fitting. Uh, this is Reynolds, the, the Reynolds number. And uh, yeah, what I'm highlighting is the Reynolds number, and that's applicable for flat plate flows. So, how else are we supposed to estimate other kinds of uh, friction coefficient? If we were to look at some theoretical uh, derivation, uh, this is how we kind of do it. Okay, first we we think about the simplest case. We think of boundary layer flow. Okay, this is a 2D boundary layer flow. So this is what it looks like. Hopefully you have dealt with this before. Okay, so partial U bar partial Y plus V bar partial U bar okay got a typo here partial u bar partial y so first one is partial u bar partial x equals minus one divided by rho okay uh partial p bar partial x plus plus partial my partial y this is our boundary layer again so new plus new t okay new plus new t into uh, partial u partial y u bar partial y okay Immediately, we can realize that this is pretty much uh, what the shear stress is. Okay, this is the shear stress um, divided by the density. So we can just uh, copy and paste here. So this is tau, tau apparent over density. Okay, because this is a kinematic viscosity not a dynamic viscosity so we have to divide throughout by the density and to make things simple we assume uh, there's no pressure gradient in the x direction why is that so okay so in a boundary layer case we assume that if there is some free stream U infinity when it hits this uh, boundary layer plate uh, like the pressure here and the pressure here um, okay the pressure at here and the pressure at here it is the same okay there is no there's no pressure driven flow to go um, to drive it drive flow uh, in the X direction right there's no pressure driven there's no pressure difference between here and here. It's just some u infinity, and it's pushing a uh, fluid to the right in the x direction. So yeah, and the second observation, um, second observation is that we realize that the uh, vertical viscosity, the viscosity in the uh, you know, the velocity in the y direction is also negligible as compared to uh, yeah. Okay, v bar approximately zero or negligible all right so that uh, leaves us with this okay for pipe flow of course uh, it's kind of slightly different we kind of uh, get the because um, the pipe flow is sometimes uh, pressure driven so we have this kind of uh, yeah, after, after the flow has been developed, 
you have this kind of velocity profile, one seventh law, one seventh power law, one seventh power law profile. Okay, so that kind of describes the general shape of the curve, but it doesn't do this one seventh power law profile doesn't do so well at the uh, at the boundary layers here. But as a shape or as a way to describe the overall curve, it is um, it is quite uh, feasible. But anyway, this is what it looks like. I won't go too much into detail of one this one seventh uh, power law profile. What I will say is this: um, the there is a pressure drop from here to here, but when in when the flow is fully developed, as you increase your uh, x direction as you increase your x direction the flow profile doesn't change as in the velocity here it will be the same as the velocity here if the uh, flow is fully developed so instead we will say in pipe flow del p del x is okay that's very long del x is not equals to zero but del u del x now you bar del x, this is zero. Okay, so this is applies this applies for pipe flow. Slightly different. Okay, so you'll say this is non-zero, but this now becomes zero. Okay. And in fact, um, V bar is also zero. Okay. Okay, this is a fully, fully developed flow. Okay, so it's very simple. Uh, we will get this equation. And what this is saying is that the shear stress just causes a pressure drop, which uh, you can't really, you can't really get any kind of useful uh, insight from this. Uh, but it is, uh, it is what it is. It's just telling you that the shear, shear stress is going to stop, uh, uh, act against the, cause the pressure to lower. That's all for pipe flow. So nothing, nothing too much there. I'm not going to solve this equation. Let's go back to a boundary layer equation. Okay, so we'll get this. Then we just have to integrate everything with respect to y. Okay. I'll tell okay, so integrate with respect to y. And why am I why am I uh, integrating uh, from zero to infinity? Okay, so this is a uh, basically just a force balance. So what, what this is physically saying that this is a force balance, it is uh, yeah, that's the only way we can like make sense of the thing, right? So we let's say we have our boundary layer again. And we take a small slice of this fluid over delta x or delta x, and over this uh, point in the fluid, uh, since this is actually a momentum equation, we're actually describing the momentum change over uh, this, uh, yeah, over this this uh, section of the fluid. And we want to integrate over all y. That means we we'll go all the way to infinity to say that, okay, um, as the fluid progresses, the momentum in the x direction slows down due to the shear stress applied. Okay, if we were to not do all the way to infinity, okay, if we're not all to do all the way to infinity, uh, okay, so, or for example here, if we only to do this part, we would also have 
if we want to integrate from 0 to let's say y1 where y1 is less than delta okay less than delta delta being the boundary layer thickness then there are two shear stresses we need to com uh, compute one is the shear stress at the bottom uh, acting on this control volume and the other is the shear stress on top that is acting in this direction so uh, to kind of uh, get rid of that problem we have to integrate all the way to infinity okay though technically as long as we integrate to somewhere more than the boundary layer thicker than the boundary layer you are generally in a safe zone because the shear stress here I mean all, everything here is uh, uniformly at u infinity so in in the free stream in the free stream uh, del u del y approximately zero so this means that the shear stress is approximately zero as well so basically all you have to do is just integrate to the uh, boundary layer and cover the boundary layer and you are in a safe zone because the shear stress here okay I'll use a different color I'll use a pink color to highlight this control volume integrating over this pink colored control volume is enough because the shear stress acting on this point it is pretty much zero so you can do a complete force balance there that doesn't really matter so uh, as long as you integrate to more than the boundary layer it is enough so as long as you integrate over the entire boundary layer that's enough okay over the entire boundary layer thickness so you might as well say that the the uh, infinity here can be delta okay okay so all right so that's just to clarify I mean we can of course change this to delta but I'm not going to do that I'll just leave it as infinity for the time being because uh, I don't know how it, uh, you don't know how thick the boundary layer can grow so it's always I mean this is always the safest way to do it okay yeah so this uh, this is not necessarily infinity so yeah we hope you hope it's clear with you then we can move on all right so next thing is to you have to deal with this term inside what is del u del x what is del u del x okay so mm, yeah what's del u del x that is the the key thing we need to figure out next yeah so what's the thing about this uh, del u del x well if we, we did the uh, laminar boundary layer flows before we will know that the equation takes about this form we can take this uh, del my del x out and um, I mean what we would have derived is we'll have u infinity minus u bar I'm not going I'm not going to uh, show you how to derive this because uh, yeah the focus of course it's uh, it's on the turbulent part of the boundary layer because this is uh, from laminar boundary layer calculations okay I'm not going to do it here because it's pretty uh, yeah time consuming and yeah to explain everything from scratch here and so uh, if you want to do it uh, get those equations you can easily find it online I'll just copy and paste this is one of the lectures by MIT marine hydrodynamics I'll just paste the link here you can go and search it yourself but my focus is on turbulent boundary layers so I'm gonna skip uh, how we actually get from here to here or how or more right more rightly how we get from here all the way to here but now just uh, assume that that works uh, yeah because that's how uh, boundary layer calculations are done uh, I'm not going to go through all of that okay so yeah question is what's uh, question is the next the, the next step is how do we determine this all right how to determine this uh, tau apparent we can do one of a few things okay now we know uh, yes there's this one seventh power law I was talking about earlier and 
I would like to uh, bring that into yeah into uh, into this picture All right okay and and again you can find this easily online the one seventh power law looks something like this where u over u infinity uh, equals to y over delta to the power one over seven okay so delta is the boundary layer thickness okay I'm gonna copy and paste this here okay so this is from experiments that if we integrate not just across the whole boundary across the boundary layer but over the whole flow uh, over the whole flow uh, we will get sort of that uh, yeah we will get this flow profile yeah so the one seven power law it is uh, something like this okay we, we have a u over u infinity equals to y over delta times one over seven u over u infinity equals to y divided by delta where delta is the momentum thickness it is thickness of the boundary layer okay the thickness of the boundary layer is delta okay so there were expressions uh, that were um, derived before if you have done the laminar boundary layer already but I'm not be going through those since this is just dealing with the turbulence bit okay so if we assume that uh, I mean okay I normally speaking you one seventh power law it doesn't really do well for predicting the velocity profile here in the boundary layer but if we assume I mean we can still use it as a very simple form because uh, it's like easy to integrate and just using it as an, as an example okay so uh, we can we can use the 1 7 power law to fit our experimental data in the boundary layer what am I talking about uh, I will say you see over here we can use uh, for flat plate case we can use uh, the logarithm of 10 okay to fit uh, data of the friction factor or yeah the friction factor against a Reynolds number okay doesn't have to be log 10 per se there's nothing really um, there's nothing uh, from first principles that dictates you have to use a log 10 you can use a log 7 if you want or you can use a natural logarithm doesn't really matter you just change the numbers because it's empirical likewise uh, the 1 7 power law it is uh, an, an empirical fit there's no there's no uh, there is no uh, theoretical basis behind it as long as you fit it to experimental data it is usually fine okay okay so if we use the 1 7 power law to fit use it as a curve fitting to our experimental data in the boundary layer i.e. to say uh, we are using it to fit uh, data collected from experiments that were used okay where is it oops I think I shot past it I'm using it to fit uh, experimental data yeah just like I was using uh, experimental data to fit this uh, u plus equals uh, a ln y plus plus b all right this is just one way we can fit and the other way we can fit is using this Vendris model I mean there's no fixed way to uh, fit the data in the boundary layer okay but these th those things above have been shown to work well but the other way we can fit is to use this 1 7th power law just an example we can use those earlier expressions as well no problem but that will result in u plus equals to 8.7 y plus to the power 1 over 7 okay so this uh, parameter fits the data best this number 8.7 and if we were to substitute back in here okay so why am I substituting this uh, I'm substituting just the velocity profile based again on experimental data doesn't have to be uh, yeah doesn't have to be um, 
doesn't have to be based uh, from first principles as long as it fits the experimental data it's fine okay so um, so what this shows is that you don't really need to measure the tau apparent uh, directly using uh, curve fitting from let's say doing experiments directly and then you want to find the uh, friction coefficient or as you alter the Reynolds number likewise you I mean this is for the flat plate case you can do it slightly differently as well you can work from first principles rather than perform a second set of experiments to try and determine tau apparent okay so um, if we do everything right and then we we do this uh, non-dimensionalization okay I'm going to skip steps a lot of steps after substitution we realize that okay just bear with me a bit tau apparent over rho u infinity square so this is something like the the friction coefficient this is equals to 0 0.0 225 u infinity delta divided by nu and this is going to the power of minus 1 over 4 okay and delta over x equals to 0.37 times u infinity x divided by nu if you are, if you have done boundary layer calculations before this shouldn't be too foreign to you what this delta is so i assume you do you do know that and if we want to combine both of these equations um, we will get this following expression okay c fx that will be equals to 0 0.0296 times the Reynolds number to the power of 1.5 okay so this expression uh, yeah this expression yeah this expression was derived without uh, Okay, the useful bit, the useful bit is that we derived this expression without performing additional experimental work to measure C F X directly. So you can do it kind of from a first principles way so long as you have okay the only thing is to have a function which describes u plus as some function of y plus which we have plenty of those in the uh, we have plenty of those uh, fitted you know from experiments okay we have u plus as a function of y plus and we can substitute in here for various uh, for various uh, flow profile i mean yeah as long as we have this this um, we can kind of estimate the friction factor okay so uh yeah in that's in the boundary layer and we find okay it was found that uh this expression here this expression here works for Reynolds number of uh, up to from turbulent transition five times ten to the power of five all the way up to one times ten to the power of eight okay it's not as good as the other experimental fitted profile which you find here this one works all the way to ten to the power of nine but it shows that you know you can uh, derive this expression without performing even more experimental work to measure this directly so as long as you have this function here you can sort of guess what the uh, friction 
uh, velocity friction profile is okay yeah so I mean always it's always best to measure it directly but yeah this one is also based on the earlier set of experiments so you don't have to do one more bit so this is how you can ex uh, actually derive a friction coefficient or guess a friction coefficient for uh, any any sort of uh, uh, thing let's say you have this Let's say you have a sphere, for example. So if we know if we know the u plus as some function of y plus, if you know that uh, if you know that uh, profile in the boundary layer, you can just uh, do this same process, and that will help you to get the tau apparent there, and that will then help you to get your velocity profile just by having this data here and no other data so that is one uh, so let me summarize in summary if we have some function of u uh, u plus at, as a function of y plus and we substitute this into our Navier-Stokes equation okay in our case is Reynolds average Navier-Stokes we can estimate C fx rather than measure it from experiment. So again, for boundary layer flow, your Navier-Stokes equation will look something like this. Okay, this is a two D boundary layer flow. There's a, there's a, that's what we are saying here. So these are your two baseline equations. Okay, so you can you can get CFX in general by having this kind of flow profile, and this uh, as long as you ex uh, experimentally measure it, and you substitute into our Navier-Stokes equation, you can, in theory, get your CFX. Okay, as long as of course the the uh, flow profiles cover the Reynolds number you want. So. As long as those experiments span the Reynolds, the Reynolds number, which you want. Okay. Right. So this this covers. Uh, so what I've been covering is a more theoretical method of uh, finding your tau apparent from this uh, u plus equals some function of y plus profile. For example, it can be the Van Driest profile, which was over here. Okay, you can have a function of u plus u plus as a function of y plus, and you use that to calculate the shear stress. Okay, so rather than do extra experimental work. Okay, so hopefully that's clear in this video, and in the next video we can start moving on to other stuff as well. In the turbulence, uh, yeah. So hopefully this uh. This uh, more functions uh, some uh, to, um, lesson or discussion was clear. Yeah, if you do like it, found it helpful, please uh, leave a like and subscribe. Thanks very much. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.